So you want to find some liquid metallic hydrogen somewhere. You heard about it. You think it's pretty cool. It's this exotic state of hydrogen where it's a liquid, it has metallic properties, and also has some quantum mechanical properties due to degeneracy pressure. That sounds pretty awesome and you'd like to find some and or make some. Well, if you want liquid metallic hydrogen, you need high temperature and high pressure. Where can you go to find high temperature and high pressure? Well, what about the sun? Sun's pretty hot. And I suppose there's a lot of pressure deep in the depths. Problem with the sun, and there is a lot of hydrogen in the sun. The problem with the sun is that there's a nuclear reactor in the core. There's a lot of radiation. There's a lot of energy that, that mixes up the hydrogen that changes the, the presence of so much radiation, uh, changes the, the state of matter of that hydrogen. So it stays as a plasma. So that's probably not going to work out. What about the earth? Man, the core of the earth, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of rock sitting on top of you and it's pretty hot, but not a lot of hydrogen is there. It's just um, rock. What about the gas giant planets? Aha, uh -huh. what about Jupiter and Saturn? Jupiter and Saturn are mostly hydrogen. And surely if, if you go beneath the, the, the topmost layers of the atmosphere, I bet there's a lot of pressure. The deeper down you go, you start going down thousands and thousands of kilometers below the, the outermost layers. There's going to be a lot of stuff on top of you. I bet that's going to provide a sufficient amount of pressure. But what about heat? How can a giant planet like Jupiter stay hot? Well, there's a, this interesting mechanism for, for big planets, gaseous planets, to stay warm. It's called the Kelvin-Helmholtz mechanism. Not to be confused with the Kelvin-Helmholtz Kelvin instability. This is the Kelvin-Helmholtz mechanism. And it's pretty straightforward and kind of interesting. Say you have a ball of gas hanging out in space. The surface is exposed to space. So what is it going to do? It's going to radiate. It's going to glow. It's going to release energy through the form of radiation. What does uh, that layer of gas do after it radiates? It cools down. What does a cooling gas do? It contracts. It squeezes in. So if you're down here in the core, you're seeing these outer layers around you contract inwards. That's going to add to your pressure. That's going to squeeze you down. And if you get squeezed down, you heat up. So at the same time that the core is contracting, or sorry, at the same time the surface is contracting, the core is heating up. That heats up, that heat propagates through to the outer layers, which is then released as radiation at the surface, which causes the surface again to cool down and compress even more, squeezes the core even more, and it heats up. So you can generate incredible amounts of heat in the core through this very simple mechanism. I mean, you go down a few thousand kilometers in Jupiter into the cloud tops uh, down past the atmosphere of Jupiter, and you're talking thousands of, of degrees Celsius. All right, you're talking temperatures as the same as the surface of the sun. But what's different than the surface of the sun is the incredible pressures. Very quickly, you can reach a thousand times atmospheric pressure of the Earth, a hundred thousand times a million times, a few million times of atmospheric pressure. So you have a very strange situation where you have incredibly high temperatures and you have incredibly high pressures and that's the conditions you need to make metallic hydrogen. You need the, a ton of pressure, you need a ton of heat so you can break apart the bonds, so you can just have a soup of protons and electrons and you need the incredible pressure to keep it in a liquid state and you need it, and once you have that, once you have hydrogen disassociated but maintained in a liquid state, it becomes it becomes uh, metallic. It starts to get metallic properties, and these weird quantum mechanical effects of degeneracy pressure start to manifest where normally you would never ever see it. So it turns out the biggest reservoir of liquid metallic hydrogen in the solar system is in Jupiter, most of Jupiter. Think about this. Next time you look at Jupiter in like a backyard telescope, you're really looking at a giant ball of liquid metallic hydrogen covered in a few layers of atmosphere. 
It's a very exotic state of matter. And usually we only associate exotic states of matter with things like neutron stars and white dwarfs, you know, some of the really weird stuff in the universe. Turns out there's some exotic matter right here in our backyard. We just have to go to Jupiter or Saturn. And we're pretty sure, we're pretty sure based on understanding of physics and chemistry, uh, our understanding of, of the gravity and the heat and the, the dynamics happening inside these gas giant planets, plus uh, measurements from the surface of what we can infer uh, of what's going on in deeper layers, we're pretty sure that there's liquid metallic hydrogen going on in the cores. But let's say that's not good enough. Let's say you want some, you know, to play with. You want to hold some in your hand. And there have been experiments over the past decades. Uh, liquid metallic hydrogen was first predicted, I think in back in the 1930s, if I'm remembering right. And ever since then, there have been experiments to try to make some in a lab. Because right now we, we've, no one's ever touched liquid metallic hydrogen or saw it with their own eyes. Uh, it's kind of hard to get down into the, the deeper depths of the gas giant planets, even though Cassini uh, tried. Uh, but uh, we're not 100% sure it actually exists because we've never actually seen it in the lab or, or seen it manifest in nature, obviously. So uh, every few years, there's some news report like, hey, guess what? We found, like, we made some liquid metallic, metallic hydrogen. Everyone can celebrate. And it usually gets uh, refuted a few months later. The most recent case was uh, December 2016. A research group said, hey, everybody, we made liquid metallic hydrogen. Here it is. Uh, actually, they made a little wafer of metallic hydrogen. And uh, they said, there it is. There it is. We did it. Uh, uh, would, should we just get our own tickets to Stockholm for the Nobel Prize ceremony? Are you going to arrange that or, or, or what? Uh, immediately, uh, you know, the community uh, looked critically at the paper, like the community always looks critically at every paper, and, you know, argued like, you know, are you really sure you made liquid, you know, are you really sure you made metallic hydrogen or did you really make something else? Are you confusing yourself? And uh, this sample that they made, they, they made a little wafer of it, and it's actually the Another interesting property of metallic hydrogen is it's metastable. That if you make it and you don't bother it, it can actually hang out for a while. So for a while, they had it sitting in their device, a diamond anvil, by the way. And uh, But then apparently over the intervening months, it disappeared, like the anvil like broke or something, and uh, they haven't been able to make it since. So, so it's back, you know, for a while we thought it was certain, and, and now it's back to just like, uh, oh, we're not exactly sure if we've made metallic hydrogen in the lab, but we're pretty sure it's in these gas giants, it's in Jupiter and Saturn, this, this crazy exotic state of an otherwise pretty normal element. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. You can also please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And patreon.com slash PM Sutter, there's links down here, there's buttons over here, uh, is how I support the creation of these videos and my radio show, my podcast, all my education and outreach activities are fully supported by you. So I would really appreciate if you could help out. If not, if you can't help monetarily, that's totally cool. Uh, just share these videos, just, um, you know, tell people about them. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks and see you next time.